Hey guys, how's it going? It's Ape Eric. So we're going to talk about Low Key Episode 2. I did a recap last week. I'm a couple days late on this, but I'm like, alright, we're going to keep up with this. We're going to do this. Uh, so Episode 2 kind of leaves off where Episode 1 did. So at the end of Episode 1, we got the reveal that there's a Low Key variant causing trouble for the TVA. And they need Low Key from our timeline, or whatever the MCU's timeline is, to help contain this variant to basically get rid of them so the main part of this episode is is they're actually putting loki into the field of action the tva is going out they're investigating all these things trying to gain a a clue on where the variant will be next so a lot of it is um basically spent trying to figure out things about the variant so you'll see loki he spent some time researching, trying to find a common ground, and he discovers that the um, the variant likes to go to apocalypses, certain apocalypses in time. Where, for example, they go to Pompeii, and Loki discovers that no matter what, the apocalypse to these branches is inevitable. So he can go to Pompeii, cause a disturbance set things on fire, do a whole bunch of things to mess with what's going on there, but it will not change the outcome of the apocalypse so he pointed this out to agent mobius and it actually opened up a lot of doors for them but they found out the gum the gum the candy that was given to the kid in the first episode was traced back to a place in 2050 in the united states and then right here it kind of opens up a very mysterious and thrilling type of vibe so they're in this like super market store thingamabobber that uh gives off a kind of i would say almost um a horror vibe because of the lighting and stuff like that and, and it's the idea is they don't know what the variant looks like who the variant is because loki can shapeshift he could change to look into anybody and there was a lot of um speculation leading up to this that it would be a female version of loki that that was what it seemed like they were going to go for. And it was revealed. Um, now, at this time, there's still a lot of speculation on if this variant is even Loki or if it's the Enchantress. And there's some kind of swerve that we have going on. Um, after me speculating the entire time on WandaVision, I've learned um, that it seems like they want us to speculate and think that they're going a certain route only for them to turn a 180 and do something else so i'm gonna lean onto the thing that this variant that was revealed is still the intent chantress but she uh, basically revealed herself she was transferring from one character to another until at the end of the episode she basically told him that um her whole thing her whole agenda isn't about loki that there's something bigger than this and it you know, she vanishes into a time portal, basically going off somewhere else into time while revealing that she had all these canisters that the TVA use to reset time. Uh, basically, it's these energy containers that they've used that we've seen um, in the episode already from episode one when they reset time. While well, she gathered enough of those and enough time portals to where she it was pre, it was a pretty epic fucking scene looking at it to where it affected the sacred timeline which the whole point behind the tva is to make the sacred timeline stay intact they didn't want any more branching timelines because they're afraid that it'll lead to a multiverse war which we all know that's probably what dr strange multiverse of madness is supposed to lead up to we're all getting the hints that there's going to be nexus events that lead to a big multiverse war that's where it's going at and this scene alone at the end of the episode was just so amazingly like done i was like hyped that it set the stage for what phase four is going to be we saw it this was the initial phase um so you see these monitors at the tva and uh the little i guess touch touch screen tablet thing that they have where it shows the sacred timeline splitting up into several different branches as a result of this but loki jumps in following lady loki so we're going to see what comes out of this loki did reveal that his plan was to take over the tva and gain their power or whatever and 
control the timekeepers. Who knows if maybe he was saying that to distract Lady Loki or trick her himself. Uh, we do know in the past, Loki's always changed sides to survive, basically get to his advantage. But he did reveal what I was speculating, and that was that he wanted to gain control of the power of the timekeepers. Um, she wasn't buying it, though. She didn't want anything to do with that. So it's leading me to think that maybe... Um, there's some kind of swerve here because she reveals that she knows the location of the time keepers or it's revealed that she knows them. Um, I think there's going to be a swerve here where it's revealed that the TVA is actually the bad guys. I'm not really too familiar with the source material of the Marvel comics or anything like that, but I have a feeling that there's going to be a swerve that shows that the TVA are the bad guys that, that they wanted the sacred timeline to be just one huge timeline that they could control, that they knew the outcomes, that they had the power over the entire multiverse. Uh, and now that the multiverse, it's almost like a Robin hood type of thing. I, I'm getting like, like somebody that's like, fuck, fuck the timekeepers, fuck their control. They're dictators of time. They're dictators, of the multiverse. Um, I, I feel that that's where they're going to go with it. Now, things that I did like with this episode is that we definitely did get to see quite a bit more interaction between Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston's characters. Um, I think they have some of the best on-screen chemistry between two characters in the MCU. Uh, we also got to see a little bit more about what the TVA is about and how they're run as an organization, but they still remain pretty mysterious, which leads me to think there is going to be a swerve. Now, I guess this Lady Loki thing was probably the worst kept secret. We all knew it was going to be something like that because they said Loki's gender fluid and um, he doesn't have like a set gender because he's a shapeshifter, right? Uh, but we did, we did get to see a little bit more in regards to Mobius and Loki's um, chemistry with each other, their interaction. We got to find out a little bit more about the plot of the TVA and how they handle. But we also learned that Lady Loki was able to discover a huge loophole in the security of the sacred timeline. And that was the fact that if you go to a timeline that is about to be ended, there's no way for it to change. Uh, in other words, like I was saying, uh, with Loki pointing out that apocalypses are going to happen no matter what. So it would be a perfect place for somebody to hide, disrupt the timeline, do what they need to do to hide out and leave before Pompeii explodes or before a tsunami happens. And they could leave to another apocalypse without getting detected because that timeline ends anyway. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, I, I like that Loki um helped them discover that but again he did say that his goal was to gain an audience with the timekeeper so he could overthrow them so we don't know if we could trust loki just yet or not it's going to be interesting to see what loki does by following lady loki into the time you know the timeline that she went to the time portal uh, i have a feeling that we're going to see kind of like a doctor who uh vibe with this series i've already kind of noticed it because it always seems like all the decorations and the tva are just like that retro fallout retro like feel like almost like a 1960s 70s type of design with the decor and even like the screens and stuff like it just looks like it's outdated futuristic technology if, if that makes any sense I feel like we're going to definitely get a Doctor Who vibe. We're going to see them jumping from all the branch points. If you paid close en enough attention to the screens when the branches were happening, we had a lot of locations that were in Avengers movies, including Vormir. Um, and then we also had stuff that hadn't been discovered yet in different timelines and stuff. So I have a feeling we're going to be seeing a lot of different jo time jumps and um, seeing different universes that certain things happened or certain things changed, and we're gonna it's it's gonna be pretty interesting to see a different different types of possibilities for multiverses and what what could be out there if things changed and stuff. And I think it's gonna open the door to a lot of cameos and a lot of surprise returns, even if they're one offs. So I think this series is going exactly the way I want it to go. So I think this was a pretty good episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, guys, and I'll see you on the next, next one. Thank you for watching.